Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back here to today's edition of The Fishing Teacher and really appreciate you guys coming by the channel to spend some time with me today. Always very grateful to have you guys around. Today guys, I'm gonna show you the Big 18 Magnum Rapala trick. This is something that works really good in the month of November and December. I've been fishing this thing for well over 35 years and it's been sort of an Ozark secret staple. So I'm gonna give you guys some tips and advice on how to fish it and the conditions it works under in today's video. I think it's gonna add up to some pretty big, pretty big fish for you guys, it's the big fish bait. Uh, one thing guys, before we get started, I just wanna let you know that Tackle Warehouse has just got a thousand jig shipment in, a new shipment of my block at throwback jig in. And I've been talking about this particular color for the month of November. This is one of my favorite November colors. It's the brown and orange guys with some type of a brown or a green pumpkin uh, trailer on it. But the brown and orange block at throwback jig Living Rubber is an excellent color in the month of November. For whatever reason, they just really bite it. Um, you know, half ounce and three eighths are my two favorite sizes. So I'll put my uh, throwback jig link in the description through Tackle Warehouse if you guys would like to pick you up a few, but they just got a big shipment in. So I know you guys that have tried to order, they've been on back, back order a while, but got them going now, so appreciate that. Okay guys, here it is, the number 18 Rapala Minnow. You can see this one here. Look at the freaking teeth marks and the and the different, you know, you know, hook slashes on it that I fished them so much. This is something that made, was made famous back in 1983. Uh, an angler named Jimmy Chris won the, uh, it was a world, or I think a world bass or a Western bass tournament on Tabor Rock. He won $100,000, which was one of the first $100,000 prizes ever rewarded in, in fishing. And he won, he caught every one of the fish on this big uh, Magnum 18 Rapala right here. And it had, even before he won that tournament, there was a few guys using it that weren't talking about it. But I wanna talk about it, how it's still, it's still just as productive today under the right conditions. Now, first of all, when you get this thing, and also guys, I'll put the link in the description to this bait if you guys wanna get one through Tackle Warehouse. But one of the things you have to do with it is you've got to weight the, the belly with lead. This, I just put some lead strips on it here and uh, super glued it. But you want this thing where it suspends. And since the Rapala is a balsa minnow, it floats pretty fast. So you've got to spend some time weighting this thing. There's different ways to weight it. This is just the way that I did it right here and I sort of painted it with some fingernail polish. But that's a big key element because you're fishing this like a suspended jerk bait. So, um, and black and silver is my favorite. I, I've done pretty good on the blue and silver. Probably black and silver is my favorite. So first of all, I wanna talk a little bit about how you wanna work this thing. And then we'll talk about the areas that it works in the best because you don't fish this like a, a traditional jerk bait. What you need with this is you need a fairly stiff long rod. I prefer like a seven foot uh, heavy action, uh, like something you'd fish a jig with. I, I use that seven foot two inch mega bass perfect pitch rod. I'll link that rod in the description too. And I usually fish it on 15 pound test Seaguar and Vizex uh, four carbon line. And I'll throw the thing out there guys. And it's like, it's a jerk bait and you're fishing it like a, you're fishing it like a jerk bait, but there's a technique to it. Let me show you here how you do it. Throw it out there and and just, when, you, when you're reeling it down, reel it down for five or six cranks like that, then Go, go like this, just jerk your rod tip with high, go boom, 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 like that. Boom, boom, sideways with it. You don't want to do this jerk, jerk, pause, jerk, jerk, pause. By ripping that rod sideways, I'm talking hard. It's like I got the seven foot rod and I'm going boom, 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 boom. And this thing, what happens is this thing darts like crazy and then you stop it a little bit. And it's a big profile jerk bait and that ripping technique, ripping the Rapala, creates this reaction strike as long as the water temperatures are pretty much above, you know, 55 degrees. It doesn't work that good once the water drops below 55, but when that water temperature is, say, 55 to 70 degrees, guys, this thing is a deadly technique, ripping the big Mag-18 Rapala. Now, I have caught them everywhere on it. I, got, I did real good in a tournament down at Lake Seminole, Georgia one time on it. I, I did good in a tournament on Lake Murray in South Carolina, real good on it. I did good in a tournament on Sam Rayburn with it, obviously here in the Ozarks, but I have literally caught them all over the place on this Mag-18 Rapala. Probably one of the top three biggest bass I ever hooked in my life was down at Lake Seminole uh, in a Bassmaster tournament on this thing. I actually lost it. I was I was jerking this thing out in those trees in Spring Creek on, on Lake Seminole, and I had this giant on. It was like a, it was probably an 11 or 12 pounder, and I was fighting the thing, and 
one of the hooks got hung up on one of the standing trees and the and the bait was was hooked on the tree and the fish was hooked on the front so this big 11 or 12 pounder was sort of thrashing about three feet under the water with the hook to the tree by the time i could get over there it came off so that was a crushing blow in a Bassmaster tournament, top 150, I think, for sure. But anyway, guys, this is just a really good technique this time of year. People don't fish it very much. I will tell you one thing, it will wear you out <laughs> when you do that. When you're, when you're jerking it hard like this, when you're going boom, 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 you know, it, you know you, sometimes you gotta take a rest with it. I mean, you, it's very difficult to do all day long, but a couple different things that will help you with this is try to do it with try to jerk it with two hands. Don't try to jerk it. Don't don't try to like jerk it with one hand like that. Use both both your hands like that, and that will give you twice the amount of strength, and it really reduces the fatigue about it. But this is a big deal, guys. A lot of people have kept this thing secret for years. It's still really good under the right conditions, and the best type of scenario for it is you got to have a combination of a couple different things, and they really need to be specific. Number one. Almost every tournament I've done good on this thing, it's been cloudy with a little bit of wind. Um, for whatever reason, you gotta have low light conditions. And I think a lot of it is because the lure's so big. So I wanna have a cloudy or rainy day with wind, you know, at least five miles an hour, something to break the surface up. And the water visibility is really clear, really cur criti critical. You need to have sort of in that range between say, you know, three and a half at the minimum up to maybe eight foot visibility. So that three and a half to eight foot range, if you gave me a perfect water visibility scenario, it would be about four to five foot clarity. And I've, again, I've caught them on every different type of cover. I've caught them over grass beds, like I said, at Lake Seminole and Sam Rayburn. I've caught them in standing timber. Um, I've caught them on main lake points. That tournament I did good, good on Lake Murray, I was catching them on main lake points. But I like to throw it around some type of a, an object usually is the best, like next to a boat dock or around some standing timber, around some hard structure edge. Paralleling bluffs are really good with it. You can get just on long stretches of bluffs and parallel the bluff with it. Don't have to have timber, but timber helps out. But mainly the same type of places you'd fish a regular jerk bait. Wherever you, wherever you think you can catch a fish on your typical jerk bait, the bigger pala will catch fish under those conditions of water temperature 55 to 70, water visibility three and a half feet to about eight foot, and in the fall time of the year. It, it works It works decent sometimes in the spring, but I, I definitely do better on it in the fall time. So anyway, guys, I'll put the Tackle Warehouse link in the description. Um, check them out. If you can't find them there, just Google it on eBay or you can get them from Rapala. But it's um, I've got a whole box of them. You can see right here how many that I have. And like I said, the blue back one right here is pretty decent too. I've done pretty good on that. But um, it's another technique to add to your arsenal is if you didn't already have enough to try out there. So anyway, guys, hope you're doing well. Please hit that subscribe button if you like the video and the like button and we'll talk later.